All right, I'm fixing to saw, start sawing this morning. Oh, I got 20 logs cut and uh, ramped yesterday, so they're ready. You see them right there. All of these were planted in 1989, and they were planted to harvest and uh, cut into lumber. Anyway, I cut them right here on my own property and uh, and bring them to the mill right with that you know that low right there. And they're cut right, right there. That bigger timber you're seeing over there, that's 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 gonna be the the stuff that was planted in 1989, and it is uh, yellow pine. Right now, I'm fixing to change the blade on it. I'm just gonna show you all this right here. I do have a, a my own sharpening system. I keep them sharp. Uh, have the teeth, you know, set the teeth on them. I've got a tooth setter and all that. 18 horse Briggs on this little old mill right here. Oh, wood cut 16 foot, I extended it out until it cuts off. Uh, 22 now, to cut 22 foot now. I would recommend if you get one of these and you do have these blades, to wear gloves. I need to be wearing gloves right now. I'll be making a, setting an example, but I've handled them a lot, so. And I stay skin up, so. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how to, uh, to coil this thing up. I don't know if you can see it where that's at, but just put a foot right there, twist, turn, see, just roll it up a wide like that, that way it'll, you know, it's not taking up so much room. Got a good sharp one right here. On this pine, oh, I run diesel fuel as a drip on the blade. Keeps the pitch from building up on the blade. Plus, it's you know it's a lubricant too, so it's it's actually it's actually saving you know saving the life of that blade you know with the friction and all build up you know. But uh, you can use soap, you know, like just any joy or something like that. But I like the diesel fuel, and it's not like it's so. Uh, Going everywhere is just a drip. It's just dripping on that on that band as it's going around. So it's not until it's not like I'm covering the ground with it or anything. This blade runs with like 20, about between 2200 and 2500 psi's on this blade. It's an inch and a quarter wide. You can get uh, wider for bigger saws or whatever. But uh, this is a 1990 model. This thing's old. I don't know how many thousands of board feet it's cut. Hundreds of thousands. It's cut a bunch. Anyway, uh, I'm going to crank it up right now and check the tracking on this uh, band. Make sure it's going to be all right. on how dirty the logs if you're dragging these logs through the dirt and mud sand and all that right there i'll probably get i don't know four or five hundred board foot out of a blade sometimes less than that you know before it'll need sharp oh a good clean batch of logs which that's what i try to do as soon as i down it i cut them into sections and I pick them up with that lull and then that way i'm not dragging them through the dirt filling the bark up full of sand because that's the life of the blade. It don't matter how what kind of diesel fuel you're putting on the blade, it don't cut dirt good. It dulls them pretty fast. Anyway, I get uh, I get four sharpenings out of blade before I pop one. So most of the time on that on that third time, I just discontinue them because uh, you know most of the time on that on that last cut they pop. And uh, it's just a mess, you know. And plus, it's dangerous too. So I just, you know, about the third sharpening, I just quit after that. Anyway, I'm fixing to uh, roll that big boy right here up on here, and uh, I'm probably gonna do a time lapse because it's gonna take so, you know, it takes a while to cut them up. I'll just do a time lapse, and y'all can sit there and watch, and I'll see what you think.
see the little old, this old thing in action. But let me tell you, she cuts pretty good. Keep it greased. Keep the oil changed in it every 40 hours. And uh, with the grease, you know, anybody knows that, that uh, if you got a grease fitting on something, don't be scared. Put some grease in it. And it's, you know, it, it's a whole, that grease is a whole lot cheaper than replacing pins and burns and, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway. Let me see what I can't do here, y'all. Appreciate it. All right, let's go get y'all caught up on the stacking end of this. this procedure right here a while ago i had you had the time lapse set up on that side of the mill and this is this is the this is the one by 12s i cut out of the uh out of that log so i cut one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one by twelve and two one by tens out of that one log from a while ago it's not too bad anyway what i was going to share with y'all is when when stacking this stuff I use one inch by one inch uh, sticks. And if, say, I'm going one by two tens, or, you know, one by twelves on the bottom, and I'm going to stack one by tens on the top, and I could possibly get them with the low, you know. So when I change lumbers, I might put a two by in there. That way the forks of my, you know, my forks on my low will slip between it. You know what I'm saying? And then that way I can just pull the one by tens off the top and then the one by twelves or whatever. But anyway, uh, I try to put these sticks 36 inches apart. I try to keep it straight and level. You don't want, you know, you don't want it twisted like that because your lumber, once it dries, it'll be twisted. So you want to keep your foundation up under these stacks as, as, as straight as you can get them. I mean, it don't matter if they're going downhill or whatever. Just keep everything the same. All right, that being said, I had a lot of people asking me, you uh, about dry times on these lumber on this lumber and uh, this time of the year is the best time of the year to cut it here the humidity's so bad around here that oh, I try not to cut in July and August for sure because I mean it is terrible and what it'll do is this middle board especially on the lower part you know on the lower end of the stack this middle board will be moldy I mean it'll actually have mold growing off of it and you know that's not good so this time of the year being the best time of the year for uh, a month and these one by 12s i'll be able to use these one by 12s and yes i build cabinets out of these things i mean you can get a moisture meter and actually check the uh, humidity i mean the, the moisture content in this lumber before you use it but uh, around here i just go like a month if the, if the humidity is low and the temperature's high oh uh, a month, you know, if you've got say ten days in a month, that that's that's humid. Just add another week or two to the to your dry time. You know, it's sort of a, a you know play it by ear thing. You don't really know for sure what you're going, you know, what conditions are going to hold. So anyway, oh, two by two months. You know, double the time, double the length of uh, the dry time. Anyway, oh. I had y'all set up while I go back there. I'm gonna set you up right here and do a time lapse and then that way you can see uh, the stacking because as that mills are cutting, I'm stacking. That way it makes things faster. Doing this stuff by yourself, you got to figure out the best way and the fast way, you know, fastest way to do it. I try not to, to shove these things in here too when I'm drying. I try to keep these stacks less than 36 inches wide because of the airflow. And I try to put a gap between between the stacks that way they can breathe you know what i'm saying but i got a big tin top up here that's producing a lot of heat in the middle of the day so that's helping you know what i'm saying and then we got a good stiff wind too this time of the year so that winds i tell you what it can be it can be uh 80 degrees outside 90 degrees and you can get on the downwind side of this stack right here and it's like walking in the air conditioner because of the moisture that it's evaporating coming through that lumber right there it's cooling that temperature off i mean like that so uh, 
you could put a fan, it's almost like a swamp cooler. Put a fan on that side, especially when it's just, when I've just cut it, put a fan on that side right there and blow through, and it'll keep the cooler over here while you're stacking this long. So, anyway, let's see what kind of cut we can't do from this other side, see what y'all, see if you can see it from here pretty good.